Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia and welcome back to another better commandery guide video. Today we'll be going over everyone's favorite commandery, Jian Ye. This video is made in response to my subscriber Ronald's comment on one of my other videos asking for advice on how to best build Jian Ye. So hopefully this video can do just that. Jian Ye is one of my personal favorite commanderies in the game that is capable of generating serious income and showcases how powerful Wu Xing building synergies are. So let's get started. First, we can see here that Jian Ye's commandery capital is located near the mouth of the Yangtze River. There is also a salt mine specialty county to the east and a copper mine specialty county to the south. Historically, it is also the capital of the kingdom of Wu under Sun Quan. Although we haven't really talked much about Chinese characters, history, or trivia on this channel so far, I intend to start here with Jian Ye. After all, my channel is called Serious Trivia, so a little trivia shouldn't hurt. The word Jian Ye contains two syllables, thus when you write it in Chinese as shown here, it is actually two characters. This name was given to this commandery by Sun Qian in the year 211 when he moved the capital of Wu here. The name is a portmanteau of the phrase Jian Li Di Wang Zhi Da Ye, written here, which means to build a dynasty. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Chinese, this phrase can be broken down into Jian Li, which means to build or establish, and Di Wang Zhi Da Ye, which means an empire or a dynasty. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with portmanteau, it's simply a term for when you squeeze two words into one, like brunch, sitcom, or motel. These truncated words are called portmanteau. So for this long Chinese phrase here of Jian Li Di Wang Zhi Da Ye can be truncated to just Jian Ye. Okay, that's two trivia facts from one name. I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, because I intend uh, to put more trivia on my channel for the future. But before we digress too far, let's go back to the guide. As always, we'll begin our commandery guides by looking at the specialty counties to tailor the best build for Jian Ye. First, let's look at the salt mine. The salt mine building chain is very simple and linear. As you level up, the amount of industry income provided increased by 100 until level 5 where it jumps by 150 instead. Next, we have the copper mine, whose building chain looked very similar to the salt mine until a branching at level 5, where option A is an upgrade to the copper mine town where industry income continued to jump by 100 to a total of 500, whereas option B is more interesting as it sacrifices 50 industry income to gain a 4% faction-wide reduction to corruption. This reduction to corruption is very powerful, and thus I recommend you to always take this branch for all your copper mine counties. Apart from these two specialty counties, Jian Ye's commandery capital also resides on the Yanxi River, so one of their building slots defaults to the harbor building that's shown here. We can treat this as a quasi-special county, so let's take a quick look. As we can see here, prior to the branching at level 3, the harbor building chain provides some food from fishing and some flat commerce income. At level 3, you have to, to make a decision between a more food focused build or a more commerce income focused build. Since we have so many sources of industry and commerce income in Jian Ye and no peasantry counties or fertility advantages, we'll forgo the food branch and instead just focus on the commerce income branch. At level 5, there is a farther branching in the commerce income branch where you have to choose between upgrading it to the spice trading port or the grand trading port. Now for the spice trading port, you must have already acquired spices, which is a specialty county located in the southwestern regions of the map. If you have already secured spices, then it's a good idea to just go for the spice trading port. However, prior to that, and for the purpose of this guide, we'll be sticking to the Grand Trading Port instead. So, with two mines that both specialize in providing industry income and additional commerce income building in the harbor, it makes perfect sense to focus Jian Ye as an industry and commerce income commandery. 
even though we have already produced a template guide for commerce and industry commanderies on this channel, Jianye is a special case and deserves a more detailed look in order to highlight how powerful the Wuxing building synergies can be in this game. Jianye's commandery capital starts the game under the control of the AI faction of Liu Yao, and the two mines start the game under the control of the Han Empire. Most of the playable factions have a good shot of taking control of Jianye, unless you're playing one of the northern factions like Yuan Shao, the two bandit factions, or Gong Sun Zan, or a western faction like Dong Zhuo, Ma Teng, and Gong Du. Otherwise, you can definitely plan to add Jianye into your early game plans. Now, since so many factions are able to grab Jianye if they desire, we'll continue this guide with just the vanilla building options and ignore any possible faction unique buildings. If the faction you're playing have superior faction unique buildings, then please feel free to just utilize those instead of the vanilla versions discussed here in the guide. Also, since everyone might be taking Jianye at different times in the game, I have also decided to just arbitrarily start our guide at level 4 small city for the settlement and level 2 mines for the specialty counties. So let's jump into building Jianye. Here in the small city, we have three building slots to utilize. The first slot will always be the harbor building, while we have some options for the other two slots. The candidates for these two slots are the inn building, the state workshop building, and the private workshop building. The market wharf building chain is not considered here, as it can only be upgraded to level 3 when the settlement is a small city, so it is vastly inferior to the private workshop which can be upgraded to level 4. Add on the fact that the private workshop are cheaper to build, cheaper to upkeep, and provide Wuxing building synergies for market and learning buildings, you should always build it before the marketplace or market wharf building chain. From these three candidates, we can create three possible combinations of building choices. So let's take a look at all three of them to determine the best build. The first option is the flat income route by building the state workshop and the inn building. This build gives the most flat income, but lacks the multiplier that the private workshop provides. The second option is the commerce focused route with the inn building and the private workshop to provide additional multipliers. And the last option is the industry focused route with the state workshop building and a private workshop building to maximize the amount of industry income from specialty counties. To best figure out which options is best, let's run through the numbers. Here, we can see that for the first flat income route, we can generate 739 gold per turn with all level 1 buildings. We can compare this to option 2 and 3, or the commerce focus and industry focus routes, which generate 694 and 635 gold per turn, respectively. So option 1 wins out here. However, some might want to argue that it is not entirely fair to compare just level 1 buildings, as upgrading them to a max level 4 could have an impact. Especially since at level 3, the harbor building chain introduces a new commerce multiplier that is not available at level 1 or 2. So let's now compare this build with level 4 buildings. But before we do that, we want to quickly take a look at the necessary reforms to upgrade all these four buildings from the harbor, inn, state workshop, and private workshop to level 4. To achieve this, you only need these six reforms displayed here, and they bring additional multipliers for our economy. So let's now recalculate and look at option 1, which now generates 1,782.5 gold per turn. Option 2 generates a close 1722.5 gold per turn, and option 3 generates a meager 1530 gold per turn. So we actually didn't change our decision. However, some might point out that I arbitrarily assigned the two specialty mine counties to level 2, and that we can max out both of these to level 5. So let's try that. Once again, we'll first take a look at the necessary reforms to achieve this. As shown here, we need to add 8 additional reform, which is quite big of an investment in terms of the number of turns, but also yields us additional bonuses listed here, which we'll once again include in our calculations. So now, 
we have truly maxed out the small city build, you can see that option one now generates 2922.75 gold per turn. Option two generates 2857.75 gold per turn. And option three generating 2701.25 gold per turn. So after all that calculating, we can see that it's still better to go with the pure flat income route from option one. Alternatively, we don't have to go through all this. And instead, as long as our food supply can handle the four additional food per turn, we should simply upgrade the small city to a city first and build all three of our excellent options together as shown here. This is a max build for a city in Jianye and it generates roughly 3,500 gold per turn. It's good, but it can be better if we add administrator assignments. One thing I definitely want to cover in this guide is how powerful the Wuxing synergies are for a commander like Jian Ye. If you look at the buildings here, we already have 50% discount to learning and market buildings, or the blue buildings, just from building synergies alone. Even before upgrading the mines to level 5, we had a 40% discount. Add in 25% discount from high expertise Sentinel administrator, an item set like the Foreman plus a clay cup, which gives additional 25% discount to blue buildings. We can essentially build blue building upgrades and constructions for free or for only 10% of the cost. This is game breaking. If you didn't catch it, let me repeat it. You can essentially build up the Harbor in and eventually the Market Wharf building chains in Jianye for free. In my recent Cao Cao Legendary Let's Play on the channel, I have already set up Jianye with a 90% discount for market and learning buildings. So if you want to see this powerful discount in action, I suggest you can check out my latest episodes on the channel. Okay, back to perfecting Jianye for the late game. Once you have complete this city build, you can definitely upgrade it to a large city and a small regional city as soon as you can. This build will require you to have food source outside of Jianye, although the harbor building does provide three food, so it helps a little. Your commandery will also have public order issues, but please don't waste this economic powerhouse of a commandery by building temples or military infrastructure buildings. Just have an army nearby and farm the rebels and enjoy the gold coming from rebels and the commandery. Once we have the small regional city, we have unlocked all level 5 building upgrades and a fifth building slot. But before we can put any of those to use, we have to get the necessary reforms first. So we move on from the 6 reforms needed for level 4 buildings to the 14 reforms required for level 5 counties to now the 18 reforms now needed to complete our small regional city build. This time, we only needed to pick up 4 additional reforms, which is a quite reasonable ask. And we also get to pick up some valuable income multipliers too. So now we have the completed small regional city build displayed here by adding a level 5 market wharf building. It now generates close to 6,000 gold per turn, which we can increase by adding an administrator. So let's do it. By adding a sentinel or strategist administrator, we can receive 40% additional income bonuses to commerce, 15% additional income bonuses to industry, as well as a flat 15% income bonus to all sources, and minus 30% corruption. As shown here, with an administrator that has these skills, we now can generate 6,642.5 gold per turn. On top of this, we can further utilize assignments. So as shown here, we can utilize these three assignments to roughly boost the income to over 8,000 gold per turn. Additionally, you can convert the in-building chain to a grand tea house once you acquire tea, which shouldn't be very hard since Jianye is ready in the south region of China and there are three tea sources in the southern region. That would put you with additional 400 gold per turn. Once you completed the small regional city build, 
there is nothing stopping us to upgrade the settlement farther to a level 8 regional city where we can add an office for archive and seals to boost a little bit more income while fighting off corruption. Or, since I think you can rely on your adjacent commanderies to reduce Jianye to 0% corruption, we can forego this option and instead make Jianye true to its name and build a dynasty here by placing our palace building here for the more significant income boost. If you don't want to make the political investment here and want to place your capital elsewhere, you can instead just add a level 5 labor building in the Bureau of State Mining Exp Expedition to boost the 1500 flat industry income by an additional 40%, which will give you an additional 600 gold per turn. All in all, a completed Jianye is one of the few commanderies in the game that can approach 10,000 gold per turn in income. Before I give my ratings for Jianye, let's quickly look at the adjacent commanderies. We have to the north, Guangling and Yangzhou. To the south, we have Xingdu and Kaiji. All of these four commanderies are decent commanderies and should plan to help Jianye fight corruption, either with the coin maker building or the office for archive and seals. Finally, we conclude this guide with my ratings for Jianye. For peasantry, it gets zero stars, but it is compensated by five stars for both commerce and industry. The harbor building provides a bit of food, so it gets two stars there, which is the same rating I give it for adjacency, as four adjacent commanderies is a bit low. Overall, Jianye is a five-star commandery and should be the focal point of your e economy buildup in all your campaigns. Hope you have enjoyed this guide. Our Commandery Guide series will continue this Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time with another subscriber requested video covering the yellow turban building chains. I'm very excited we're finally talking about yellow turbans, so please join us for that. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to keep up with my latest guide and Let's Play videos, and as always, I'm happy to answer your questions in the comment section below. I'd really enjoy the suggestions for different guides or just some general suggestions for the channel. So please feel free to comment below. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.